Nigeria's election authority on Friday warned of the threat of intensifying campaign violence just over three months before presidential and parliamentary elections. Dependent National Electoral Commission, INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu said the agency had tracked 50 attacks across the country since campaigning began just over a month ago. Meanwhile, the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has asked President Muhammad Buhari to arrest the sponsors of attacks on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, offices. But joining us to make sense of this is Mazi Chine Dum Obioha, a public affairs analyst. He joins us via the telephone. Good to have you join us today, Mazi. It's my pleasure. Good morning once again. All right. Well, let's look at uh, what's been happening. According to INEC, there have been 50 cases, but according to the National Security Advisor, there have been 52 cases in less than, let's say, within a month in 22 states. Uh, how do you react to this uh, report? Uh, well, my reaction is that um, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, it's un unacceptable to us uh, within a month other 50 or 52 cases reported, um, it, that leaves much to be desired. Uh, we, we least expected this. We thought by now that uh, we should have been having a free flow campaign. Um, unfortunately, INEC offices are being attacked here and there. So the government should wake up. It's uh, very unfortunate. We don't expect it. Okay. Still talking about the attacks on INEC offices. Uh, the question would be, is this a terrorist action or suppressionist action or is it political? What exactly is this about? Well, to me, I will narrow it to one area. That is political um, attacks, not uh, terrorism, not uh, whatever you call it. Okay. Uh, it is within the... Uh, political um, class that are um, perpetrating these attacks, maybe trying to frustrate the effort of INEC or try to over um, as much the other political parties. So uh, le let us leave um, uh, the terrorists or any other either uh, non government or what have you. Um, before anything happens, there must be a root. Foundation is key. So let us narrow it and talk to the political parties. We have read time and again where uh, even the politicians, uh, political parties uh, are not allowed to even campaign um, in some areas. Uh, we read that about uh, when uh, in uh, uh, boy State where the governor specifically signed uh, that, the, uh, that a particular party, a political party should not um, be given... Uh, um, I space or I, I allowed to do their political rally in a particular areas. We have read that even in uh, Edo, we have read that in uh, Kaduna, things like that. So it, it gives me concern. It's worrisome that we're experiencing it now while the, the, the campaign has not even heated up. So, which means it goes to say that between December, January, uh, we're going to see a lot of problems in this country occasioned by the politicians themselves. Now, now okay. you just, okay, go ahead. Mazi, if you say um, the political class are the ones behind them, some of these, you know, um, violent incidents across the nation pre-election, um, how about the attacks on INEC offices? We, we had, you know, one in Ocean State, another one in Ogun State with over 600,000, you know, um, 65,000 rather, PVCs being destroyed in the process. Is that also the political class considering the need you know, the voters and these PVCs to be able to win at the polls? Yeah, I, I'm very careful in choosing my words. Okay. Uh, that of, that of um, I think, uh, is our show where 65,000... Yes, uh, I know, as well. Um, uh, yes, uh, were destroyed or stolen or whatever. Uh, the government in place should be able to fish out the, those that are behind this. Okay. Uh, don't, don't forget that some of some of these things are done at the detriment of other people. I I don't want to go far. I mean, I don't want to go beyond my 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 thinking, uh, because if you go now to investigate, who are those PVCs? Who who have them? Whose names are there? We read some other, some other places that there are some certain regions yes. names from certain regions that they don't want them to get their PVC because of a particular interest. Okay. So the government should fish out the those who are perpetrating these evils. Now I I, I make bold to say that look, they know those who are 
behind this. Uh, if about 65,000 PVs were, were destroyed. Anna destroyed or stolen, why should Annex? I th think Annex said that they, they, they keep their sensitive material with the central bank. Mm -hmm. They are central bank in Oshu State. Uh, beyond that, they can make arrangement with the commercial banks. Uh, I let them put, I mean, uh, deposit this in, in, the, in, the, in the, their vaults. Then again, why should they keep this? Why can't they use the method being used in the north by distributing this PVC on arrival through the the, the, the worship centers, through the market, through the I mean the the Abbas and the MS? I think that will go a long way to solving these problems. Why should? Unfortunately, but you can't blame Anik because who knows when they got the the the, the got delivery of these uh, PVCs? Yes, and we do not be able to keep it in their own but Depending the time they will distribute it, government should go I mean, investigate. They should put down their eyes on the ground. Let, so let me come in I here, Mazi. Mazi, let me come in here. I, I, while you were speaking, I was just thinking of intelligence. What has happened to intelligence gathering? I mean, for that to have happened, I mean, some persons had information that these cards were available, and then they, they attacked. What, what's happening to our security apparatus? That's what I'm saying. That that's why I said the government should finish them out. You talk about the intelligence gathering. Where were they? And we have had some uh, um, reports that even when uh, the intelligence, I mean, people, security uh, people, give such uh, uh, information, the government are not proactive. They don't act on intelligence being given. So there are people, there are informants who now that you see before before something happens in the house, the rat inside gives information to right outside the right outside cannot have access direct to your house unless he's invited by the right inside so what i'm trying to say here is that there are informants in the INEC office that's why they will say government should fish the INEC should look in what push themselves of bad and the bad eggs there are bad eggs in INEC office that gives information if something happens in your studio, there must be an insider. If something is stolen from your house, there must be a member of household that gives information. An outsider will not know where you keep your money in your drawers. So that's what we're talking about. Information is key. The INEC offices should be able to be proactive, listen to themselves, talk to themselves, and the make sure that they have intelligent gathering let them be proactive to okay. know where they, this is the period of election okay. and they know that by and large some of these things will happen they should be pro, uh, they should be very very proactive and they protect the um, um, pvcs because without the pvc you can't go at a vote all right L let me come in here Sarah has actually asked uh, the president or let's say the federal government to you know uh, get these perpetrators name them and uh, shape them are you confident in the federal government's ability to do this within the shortest period of time saying that i mean we're pressed for time you are guess it's as good as mine the federal government will not be able to do that do you know why they are not proactive even if they're able to fish out those, they, they could be those connected to the government, to the authorities, untouchables. If it were in advanced countries, you can't, that cannot happen. If it does happen, they will must be tracked down. But in Nigeria, talk is cheap. They will say we will investigate, that will be the end of it. So my answer to the question is that within the time limit, even within the antecedents of the federal government, they might not be able to do anything. But, you see, the, 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 if it goes to the police, the police will say we are investigating. Investigation that has no end, that has a beginning, but doesn't have any end. That is the situation we are found in Nigeria. That is what is happening. The federal government will tell you they are investigating, they are not investigating. Okay, Mark, let me come in here. Don't you think we should start... Don't you think we should start asking questions about some of these investigations that have a beginning but seem to not have an end? What should be done? Do we need, you know, a citizen movement or something to ensure that government does not just say they are doing this and at the end of the day we're not seeing anything? What can be done to it to put a stop to this, really? There must be political will to make investigation. There must be political will to punish whoever is at fault. 
There are most political situation. I mean, we to say enough is enough. There are most political we to say this is bad. We must investigate. I mean, things are going out of hand in this country. I'm saying on, on the part of the people, for. as citizens, is there anything we can do when government says it's investigating a matter and then it turns out that government is taking years on end, you know, to investigate this matter? Is there anything we can do as individuals, as Nigerians, as electorates? The only thing you can do is to talk. It's only thing you, you can investigate yourself. You don't have the power to investigate. You don't have the power to arrest. You don't have the power to prosecute. So the power to arrest lies on the hand of the federal government. The power to prosecute is in the hand of the government. So what could you do than saying, talking as you are complaining, crying? Who knows whether they will listen? Even if they listen, would they have the political way to prosecute or even to arrest? They can't do that. We have had it. Let, let, let me remind you. Let me take you back uh, the 2019 election in uh, Kogi State. Was a woman not born in her house? A woman was born in her house. Those, uh, the, how many persons were arrested? I haven't heard anything about it. So that's the situation we found ourselves. So the, an average Nigerian like you and I who only talk, but you see, we become toothless bulldog. We only back. We can bite. Okay. Okay, Marzi. Still watching ourselves. Marzi, let's look at you know these various trends now when it comes to electoral violence, especially over the last um, you know um, six weeks thereabouts. We've had INEC offices attacked. We've also had you know um, attacks on other personnel, um, other you know stakeholders, politicians within that same period. How do you expect the security agencies to, to address this? Because manning you know, various INEC offices across the nation will probably also be a stretch on our personnel, considering um, the various wars they're battling with, you know, in terms of insurgency in the Northeast, you have a banditry in the Northwest, among other, you know, challenges, security challenges. So um, what, what would be the best, you know, um, solution in addressing these issues? You probably should start from... Um, the attacks on INEC offices, because there, there's the possibility that we'll have more of such attacks if um, preventive measures are not taken. Well, like, like I said, we must have to, when the INEC must push themselves or bad eggs. Okay. Secondly, the, the, the security apparatus of Nigeria has been overwhelming by challenges. But then, the issue of security is not only in the hands of the federal government. Mm -hmm. Information is key. When you and I suspect any, I mean, a foul play or any bad movement, mm -hmm. we'll be able to report. But even if after reporting, yeah. who takes responsibility? Okay. Who takes the responsibility? So the government has a lot of work to do. There are attacks on the INEC um, uh, offices, offices yeah. in the individuals. Even the politicians themselves. Mm -hmm. This is the time they will at, at smart each other. This is the time when they will try to even kill each other. We have had this severally. Even before before, before uh, um, uh, the 2015 um, okay, election. Yeah. We have had Fisher William killed here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We have had other is uh, Bolaji was killed, yeah. and so many other people. So the government should be able to have political will to investigate, arrest, prosecute, and jail. But unfortunately, what you will see that when they say they have they, they are investigating, we don't see the end. It's war without end. That, that, that's that's the probably beginning. because the case went cold. Um, not all cases investigated who will bring will, about who leads. Will, who, who will facilitate it? Who will f um, um, uh, f fast forward it? Is it not federal government? Yes, but even, even in Western climes, we, we see these things happen wherein a case just leads to a dead end and, you know, it, go it goes cold over time as a result of, you know, not having um, sufficient evidence or even um, reasonable leads. I quite understand y your position, but if that's the case, there's really little the federal government can do in terms of political will to see of these cases if they grow cold over time. Yes, I agree with you, much as you have agreed with me. Yep. The issue is that we have a system that is not working. Okay. The leaders or the rulers, as I call them, are those elected or appointed not 
to serve the masses, but to protect their own interests. If you have people who understood the meaning of leadership as a service, okay. they'll be able to give out their best for the people they, that have elected them. But here in Nigeria, it is not the same. So the federal government, much as they are overwhelmed with challenges, then those saddled with the responsibility of this thing should be upright. Okay. I mean, upright, be sincere. When they say it is yes, it is yes. Okay. I want to tell you how many Boko Harams, the Boko Harams arrested, some of them were arrested even before Jonathan came on board. Yep. Were they not the same people who the, 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 I mean, um, kept at Kujer prison? Were they not, even when there was information that Kujer prison would be attacked, did they do anything? Even when it was invaded, how many persons have been arrested? Mazi, let me come in here. Let, let me come in here, Mazi. All right. Now, if these attacks continue unabated, what are your fears? Do you think it's going to affect the 2023 election coming up in a few months' time? Yeah. Yes, it's going to affect it partially uh, in the sense that people will be afraid to go out to vote. Is it not the person who is allowed to go out to vote? People will be afraid. And again, people are no longer uh, 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 having confidence in INEC. No matter what they promise, no matter what they promise, talk is cheap. 2023 election, we pray that it works. With the rate of insecurities, with the rate of what we are reading on newspapers and the social medias, there is fear on the land. But my prayer is this, the federal government, we beat up. We now uh, stand up and say we must achieve this. Even look at uh, uh, Lagos Cyber Express, so it's no longer safe for people to travel. Even Ore, Bini Road, it's no longer safe. You talk about Kaduna Abuja Road, it's no longer safe. You talk about Lokoja Kogi Road, it's no longer safe. It's security everywhere. People will be conscious. Even that day, there will be treasure and there. And these politicians are not helping matters. Look at how they are going about with their, their political campaigns. Attacking personalities instead of them to tell the public what, what they will do. It's either this one does this, this one does this. Leaving the uh, object and be ch chasing the shadow. Is it what is self Nigeria? The answer to your question is that it might affect the 2023 election because people will be scared to go out to vote. That's the issue. That's the truth about it. Well, that those who tell you that in 2015, even at the height of Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast, elections took place even in that part of the nation. So, um, quite all right, for all of the security challenges, um, do, do you think that it will prevent the elections from holding or what you would have is apathy, you know, among the electorates in that sense? Because there will be fears of going out and, you know, the security... Um, challenges within the neighborhood, but I, I don't think the polls, you know, would um, be moved or w won't take place. W what's your thought? Yeah, you use the word voters are party. Yep. You mentioned Bruno, you mentioned Yobe. I was in one of your sister studios when this issue came up, mm -hmm. and I also knew the then governor of Yobe state said he cannot guarantee election, free election, security wise. In Yobo State, but you see, when the results started coming out, we rec Yobo State recorded the highest numbers, one point something million. And you begin to ask, I say, when did they go out of vote? The same thing happened in Bruno State. So uh, uh, they know what they are doing. Uh, you see, uh, like you know, I'm a grassroots person. I've got, I've, I've seen many, many Christmas days, Christmas Eve. So when we come on it to talk, we are talking what is what is straightforward, what is sincere. Voters are parties, yes. But then let us believe that Anek will make use of the beavers as claimed or as promised us, so that some of all these irregularities will be checked. But remember, they have told us there will be no incident forms, there will be no manual um, accreditation. Yes. But let us see it work. Because don't forget that there, uh, before the passage of this electoral act, mm -hmm. there were so many front and back. 
Yes. And they were saying that the uh, uh, network is uh, is not um, constant I mean, or regular or effective in some part of the north. So uh, I, I don't know what would be the action. Um, I mean, the effect of those people there. But what I know is that them could be voters are party, even in the southeast. Here in the west we are. Have you not been hearing that some talks in Lagos don't allow some political parties? Have their rally. Don't allow them have their people. You have not had it. Don't allow some section of people to to write, I mean to uh, I mean uh, uh, Mazi, I mean, now like that, that you are talking about this, isn't it worrisome that the crop of politicians we have are, are people who cannot even tolerate the fact that they have you know opposition parties who are also contesting the same positions with them? That's the, that's, the, that's the answer. You said it all. These are people who, let me use the word, deadly desperate, deadly desperate for power. Deadly, excuse me, there are some people, some uh, 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 political parties, some politicians that are deadly desperate that they must click to the power. They must get it by all means, by by other group or who goes. So that is dangerous. It's not the, 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 the uh, democracy we made in the 50s. It's not the democracy we made even after independence. It's not the democracy we made even before, before uh, during the two, um, 1999 or from 1999 to 2003, 2007, 2000. And, uh, it, wasn't, it has become more deadly. People are more desperate because of the center. Because there are a lot of Meat, there are a lot of food at the center. That is why everybody wants you. That is why politicians they don't be, they don't bother about you. They don't care about you. So it, it, it is going to be very dicey. That's my, my my statement. It's going to be very worried. It's already worried. It is now it, 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 people are asking questions. Why must somebody be deadly desperate in ruling this country? It's a, you are, must have to allow your people to elect you or to choose you. Let me tell you, we have um, uh, election to elect a new general overseer, as we call it, general superintendent in my church, starting from tomorrow. We have started praying that God should choose, not we choosing. But what we see in Nigeria is that we relegated God and we now use ourselves to force ourselves. Look at what happened during the during the primaries. You know how much dollars they, were, that, that, that they, they spent? Each uh, president that they spent. How many? I mean, you know how much they spent? The way dollar, there was nothing like uh, Naira, there are dollars. This pressure for you to be elected as a presidential candidate, okay. let alone when it comes. So it's, it's worrisome. Okay. Nigeria is bad, honestly. Okay, Mazi, in, in wrapping up this conversation, um, what will be your um, you know, presumption going into the polls now? And I'm asking because um, if we have security challenges all over across the nation and concerning the elections as well, we have electoral violence on candidates, on you know, INEC offices and what have you, um, wh what's your total view of it in line with the elections itself um, in terms of solutions, how you know, security um, troops, you know, can be deployed to um, the streets to ensure it's safe. You know, what's your total view about it, really? My, my, my view and my, my thinking is um, that the, our security should be um, up and doing. Okay. The prison has, the prison has uh, assured us that it's going to leave a good legacy for us. He has assured us even the United Nations, he has said it, mm -hmm. and they should be allowed to do what they are supposed to do okay. and the politicians themselves should know that it's not a do or die affair it's, uh, it's nobody's turn it's nobody's right it is our turn it's our right to elect who will become either the governor who will become either a senator who will become either a as of, uh, assembly member or who will become a presidential uh, uh, person in this country not you it's we and I, and that's why most of them, I call them uh, uh, rulers. They rule over us. They didn't lead us. Uh, because you see them, is I, I. You see, I even use I to express something. It is too bossy. A 
leader doesn't say I. A leader say we, but a boss say I. Authority. They forgotten that authority power belongs to God. But in this uh, in this time around, they have decided to relegate God aside to impose themselves. My view is that one, the politician should know that it's a game that must be lost and won. They must understand that it's not do or die at first. Okay. They must allow a level playing ground for people to come out. The security should be up, uh, up and doing. They should wake up. Not when they see crime being perpetrated, they look the other side. Like when they, we saw what happened during the Oshu election, when the body was exchanging hand, the, the, the AFCs were there, the police were there, they were looking the other side. Is that supposed to be so? And in terms of security, please, we need to be alive to see our next president. Our life should be protected. Our property should be protected. Everybody should go out and get his or her PVC. And when he gets it, he should go out without okay. any molestation, without right. any fear of favor. When you go out and cast a vote, you come back and let our vote count by the grace of God. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much, much Mazi. I think this is a good place to end the conversation. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and for the insights you have shared on the show. It's my pleasure once again. Thank you for having me. Okay, Ibrand Moment continue. Ibrand Daybreak, I beg your pardon, continues in a moment. Please just stay with us.